Hello everyone, welcome to your Caribbean News and Culture. I'm Delinda Eiffel. Let's get right into some of our top stories from this week. Guyana has taken steps to address the pressing issues surrounding large piles of garbage throughout the country. In Georgetown, Guyana, during a legislative meeting held earlier this week at City Hall, town clerk Carol Soba called for the mayor and his councillors to take immediate action in cleaning up the piles of garbage. During the heated discussion on finding ways to handle the uncontrollable piles of solid waste, it was explained that the problem is due to the lack of equipment and manpower. Guyana's director of, Sol of solid waste, Walter Noreen, also added that part of the issue in collecting garbage off the streets is because the garbage trucks and backholes are always in mechanic shops for repairs. Now, of course, such excessive piles of garbage could cause for a serious health concern to citizens of Guyana. During the forum at City Hall, it was noted that if the current uncontrollable garbage pileup isn't handled promptly, consequences would soon reflect a spread of diseases, a breeding of rats, and an influx of worms and roaches throughout the city. A cohesive decision on how to combat this messy matter, however, has not yet been agreed upon. Dominica is implementing ways to improve the country's youth unemployment rates. Due to a noted 40% youth unemployment rate, members of the United Workers Party hosted a Jobs and Economic Development Forum in efforts to create plans and proposals to generate jobs and help the country's economy. It is important to note, however, that the United Workers Party does not currently hold the office position in the country. The Labor Party does. But members of the United Workers Party are looking to begin works to rectify the unemployment rates in the event that their party reassumes power. And they are said to be expressing sincere concern for the betterment of Dominica as a whole, regardless of who is leading. United Workers Party member Dr. Thomas Fontaine, who is also a former IMF economist, believes the forum was a critical first step in solving the high unemployment rate issue the country is facing. Participants at the forum included the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, as well as members from the financial, agricultural, energy, construction, and manufacturing sectors. Could Barbados possibly have to turn to the International Monetary Fund for financial backing? Well, one of the country's leading economists, Professor Michael Howard, certainly thinks so. Howard expressed that the current state of the economy under the current Prime Minister Stewart's administration is facing a rapid decline in Barbados's international reserves and noted that policymakers may soon have to seek IMF assistance as a cheaper source of funding and balance of payment support. Barbados's government already has its fiscal adjustment package, which was announced in the 2013-2014 budget but Howard urges the government to consider turning to the IMF sooner rather than later in order to avoid widespread suffering of the country's economy. The Seven-Day Adventist Church in Kingston, Jamaica, is raising attention about the Flexi Work Arrangement document its ministry submitted to Parliament last month. Bases for the Flexi Work Arrangement are said to be implemented by March 2014, by which a major section of the document calls for seven-day Adventist workers to have the freedom to negotiate their work hours so they can honor the Sabbath, and to be able to do so without employer infringement. Honoring the Sabbath is from sunset Friday evening to sunset Saturday evening. Join a religious liberty rally held at the Western Jamaican Conference Center. Nigel Koch, who is the Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Director of Jamaica Union Conference, noted that Adventist employees who work in hotels and fast food industries are not given the privilege by their employers to honor the Sabbath. Koch also noted that due to the fragile job market, many Seventh-day Adventists often break their Sabbath in fear of losing their jobs. 
While Cope cautioned the Seventh-day Adventist population in Jamaica to continue to be respectful and mindful of employers and the workplace, he did, however, point to the fact that Christians are protected to their right of freedom of conscience and worship under the Charter of Rights, Section 17, which is an amendment to the Jamaican Constitution. Grenadians will soon start facing heavy fines and prison time for texting and using mobile devices while operating motor vehicles. The Grenada government is seeking to amend the motor vehicles and road traffic legislation so it can reflect this new legislation, which makes driving and using cellular phones or electronics an offense. During a cabinet meeting held earlier this week, it was proposed that public transportation operators who are caught in offense would face a maximum fine of 5,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars plus one year in jail. And those operating private vehicles would face a maximum fine of 3,500 ECs plus six months in jail. While there has been no concrete proof proving a correlation be between vehicle accidents and the use of mobile devices, since January 1st of this year, there have been over 825 vehicle accidents in Grenada. At the Air Medical Transport Conference held in Virginia Beach, Virginia earlier this week, a group of innovative individuals in the helicopter EMS industry introduced the works of Haiti Air Ambulance, which is a new medical service for Haiti. Haiti Air Ambulance is a nonprofit organization dedicated to launching Haiti's first permanent helicopter EMS program. Working with the University of Miami's Project MediShare and a network of other hospitals, the program will provide much needed life-saving emergency services in Haiti. Haiti has a population of roughly 10 million people, and there is only one hospital in the country that caters to advanced trauma and intensive care. So this helicopter service will potentially save the lives of many by being able to expeditiously get trauma patients into Port-au-Prince for proper care. Haiti Ambulance is expected to launch in early 2014. Our Culture Check segment is coming up next, but before we go to break, we have to take some time out to wish Antigua and Barbuda a happy Independence Day. November 1st marks the country's 32nd year of independence. to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. <laughs> Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. 
She talks that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to your Caribbean News of Culture, everyone. It's time for our Culture Chat. Now, in lieu of the upcoming elections taking place here in Boston, which will be Tuesday, November 5th, we're going to spend our Culture Chat this week talking about things that relate to the upcoming election. And to start things off, here joining us in the studio is the president of the Caribbean American Political Action Committee, Mr. Cooper. Welcome. How are you? I am fine, and thank you for having me here Absolutely. this evening. Absolutely. to be here. We appreciate it very much. Thank now, you. talk to us about KPAC. That's what it's called for short. Caribbean American Political Action Committee, KPAC. Little, little correction. It's Caribbean Amer American People's Action. People's Caribbean. Action, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, but some people, people refer to it as a political yeah, action. Which kind of makes sense because you guys do a lot is, when it, it comes is. to politics. It is. Um, officially founded about 15, 16 years ago, although we were doing um, political work long before that. Okay. A group of Caribbean Americans who felt there was a need uh, or a void to be filled in terms of um, getting our people closer to the political establishment, felt there was a need to form an organization. Not only that, um, we were working with other organizations in the past, helping get a, a, a lot of candidates elected, mm -hmm. and we never got the credit for it. So we said <laughs> you know, we, we, we would not continue in that vein because we felt we were doing so much work, especially on the ground, right. and other organizations were getting credit for it. So we decided to make it something formal. To and start your own start so you can get the own. recognition you need. Yeah. There, there, there are so many things that we have done and uh, an awful lot still to be done. Um, but our main goal is to one day um, elect one of our members or elect one of our members' children or grandchildren or somebody from in our community, a person that identifies with the Caribbean to some elected um, office here in Massachusetts. That would be great. That would Everybody, be very good. Yeah. Now, I think it's important to note that even though you guys support candidates, you don't do it in a way where you're necessarily raising funds or funds for them to spend. You're more about mobilization and education. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, um, we have raised funds for some candidates in mm -hmm. the past. Um, and one of the main reasons why we don't raise more funds is because we come from a very poor community. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that kind of resources. But uh, when it comes to devoting time and energy and the manual resources, right. we're as good as anybody else. And right. we have done that. Um, some of us since 1968, I worked on the Hubert Humphrey um, Nixon's campaign for president wow. uh, when I was a member of the uh, Hotel Workers Trade Union. Then I joined the Carpenters Union. And since 70, I've been um, doing it continuously. And other members of the organization with the Kevin White's administration, uh, we have never failed to be out there in, in, in any election cycle to work for a candidate or candidates. Mm -hmm. And um, right now we're, we're working on um, one candidate for, right. for me, there <laughs> two, we're working on one. Uh, and uh, may I say his name? Yeah, yeah. well, it's your organization <laughs> that endorsed. And uh, John Connolly, um, right. who we hope is going to be our next mayor. And we're working for four other candidates who was seeking that large candidate seats, uh, Ayanna Presley, uh, who is this? Flaherty, uh, Anissa George, and um, what's the other chair? Mr. Ross. Mm -hmm. And um, those are the five candidates that we have endorsed right. in this election cycle. Now, and what led you guys to, because I um, actually attended a couple of the events you guys hosted. Mm -hmm. The first was um, earlier during the primaries, you guys actually hosted a panel where all the candidates came to speak and engage in a discussion. And um, then it got narrowed down to two. Mm -hmm. Now the two mayoral candidates mm -hmm. are um, Marty Walsh, or well, Martin Marty Walsh. <laughs> I don't want people to think that his, his name is Marty and yeah. then they go on the ballot like, where's Marty? Um, and then John Colony, obviously. Um, so what 
process do you guys go through that led you to endorse this candidate? I, I would hope that uh, uh, during our conversation, you would call Connelly first and mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, alphabetically. You can do it alphabetically. Oh, so John Collin first. John yes. <laughs> um, we have known John for an awful long time, probably at least eight years. Mm -hmm. When he first ran for city council, um, he came in and was interviewed. And we, we found him to be a person who listens, a caring person, and we decided to endorse him then. Then the next three election cycles, we endorsed him in there again, and he won uh, all, all three times. Um, he, we also found, find out, found out that he's a very responsive person. He responds to your needs. Um, he makes you feel extremely um, comfortable in his presence, and we feel that is something that is important for us mm -hmm. to receive from any, any politician, making us feel uh, very comfortable in his presence, in their presence, mm -hmm. because uh, once that happens, you feel that you can discuss all uh, your concerns, offer your ideas and your suggestions, and have a, 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 li a good listener Perfect. who would take those um, our concerns and implement them into government policies. And I, I, I think that's the key in good. Go to good governance. Mm -hmm. It's an individual who can take your ideas and your ideals and your suggestions and institute them into good, sound government policies. Makes and sense. He, um, he is, is the ultimate person when it comes to that. And that's what led you guys to choose him. To choose him. Now, you've been involved in the political sector for quite some time. Okay. Now, in terms of the Caribbean community here in Boston, have you noticed over the course of the years an improvement in the involvement when it comes to voting? Yes, big time. Okay. Um, when we first started, it was probably about 10, 15 of us. Today we have over 40 members in the organization, mm -hmm. and by extension, probably over 100 with our wives and our kids and things like that. Uh, when we first started, it was not easy to get an individual, a, a, a person from the Caribbean, to go out and hold signs, mm -hmm. uh, even come to the, the polls cold. and ma <laughs> <laughs> man the polling stations yeah. and things like yeah. that. That was foreign to them, mm -hmm. even though they came from a, a region where mm -hmm. people vote in very high numbers. Yeah. 70, when you get 70% um, of the electorate showing up in the Caribbean, I think it's low, 80, right. 90%. Yeah. <laughs> um, but since then, we have found out that uh, uh, our Caribbean brothers and sisters are coming out in much larger numbers. Not only they're coming and volunteering to help at the polls and pre-election day events and things like that, they're voting. They're becoming U.S. citizens, voting to help to transform the electorate here in, in That's Boston. That's good. And that must be rewarding, too, yes, to be involved rewarding. in most that. Rewarding. See that? Well, we have to take a quick break. However, before we go to break, we want to take time to wish Dominica a happy Independence Day. This coming Sunday, November 3rd, the country will celebrate its 35th year of independence. Our weekend was crazy, from what I can remember. Wait, wait, wait. Slow down, Chica. Take it easy. A what? A picture of me? Who sent it to you? How did she get it? I'm not even friends with her. You gotta send it to me now. This must have been from Saturday night. I was so high. Who do you think got it? Welcome back to your Caribbean News and Culture, everyone. We've been spending our time chatting with Mr. Cooper, who is the president of the Caribbean American People's <laughs> Action Committee, even though you guys dabble into the political sector. We must it, Absolutely. Now, you guys endorsed John Colony. Mm -hmm. 
if he wins, I know you want me to say when, but from my standpoint, I have to say <laughs> if just for, you know, the purposes that I'm in right now. However, um, after November 5th, once the elections are done, what's next for KPAC? Are you guys, like, do you guys end your work until another election comes not around? All, not at all. The election cycle in Massachusetts is too short to do it. <laughs> because we're going to have state elections coming up next mm -hmm. year, which is one year, one year away. Congressional election is going to, so we don't stop working at all. But uh, right after this election on November the, November the 5th, when uh, Connolly is elected mayor of Boston, <laughs> um, we will have a post-mortem. Our members will come together and we'll have a post-mortem. Okay. Look at everything that we have done during this election cycle, the things that we have done well, the things that we have not done so well, and how we need to improve on the things that we have not done very okay. well. Then we're going to have a general election of <laughs> within the organization, mm -hmm. because uh, I think the, we need to have an election sometimes next year. We are Okay. According to our constitution, so we'll have an election, and you may see new young members, and probably yeah. we invite you come uh, across and run for, like, run for some <laughs> office. We, we need young, yeah. uh, uh, inspirational, and inspiring young people who would like to get into the political world. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, once we have done that, we 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 have in the past encouraged people to become citizens. Mm -hmm. um, so that they could come out and participate in the electoral process. What we need to do is to do it. Uh, have a more pronounced way of um, getting people to come out. Right. Okay, so we're going to have classes and things like that uh, for people who want, or I shouldn't say people, <laughs> for Caribbean people who wants to become <laughs> U.S. citizens. Right. So they wouldn't have a very difficult time passing the test because you must pass the test to ensure that you become you a U.S. Citizen, citizen. Right. And then encourage them to vote. Okay. Um, too often, you would hear. Our people, our community complain about mm -hmm. we don't have people down at City Hall or in the state legislature who represent us, who yeah. would respond to our every need. And it's because we don't vote in large numbers as we should. Right. And we want to encourage our people to do that. I look at the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. And if you take all the Jews who live throughout the world, yeah. and you take all the Caribbean and Caribbean people who live throughout the world, we're greater in number than they, than they are. Mm -hmm. Yet they, they literally control the political right. process here in this country. Everybody um, run to the Jewish community and mm -hmm. I admire them for that. Mm -hmm. So I refer to ourselves as we as the black Jews. So we, <laughs> we must rise up. <laughs> we, we must rise up. We must be able to influence the political process right. I, I, big time. And this is the thing we want to encourage. Mm -hmm. We have a Caribbean American carnival that takes place in New York. Two, three million people oh, come yeah. out. Can imagine? Mm -hmm. We can make the difference in respect to who becomes president of the United States mm -hmm. and who is not. We have 500,000 people who come to the Caribbean carnival here in Boston. We should be able to make that decision in respect to who is the mayor, who is the guy. 500,000, 250,000 votes. That's immense. Right. So we want to... Put the numbers into something that's important versus the fetting and the palancing. Most, <laughs> most certainly. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to throw um, palancing in the dung heap, though. Uh, that's too important. You like palancing? Yes, no, it's too important part of, too much of an important part of Absolutely. our culture. Uh, so these are some of the things we're hoping to do. You right. know, expand the base of the Caribbean American Political Action Committee mm -hmm. so we could reach out not to 40 and 50 and 100 people, but to thousands of people. Absolutely. We need to do that. Oh, I think that's a great thing. Now, one thing we want to get to quickly before we wrap up, a lot of times, and I'm sure you would agree with this, sometimes when it comes to voting, people, they're just oblivious. Who should I vote for? for? Where should I vote? They just don't know. So I put together a quick package for you viewers to just take a look, a look at so you can see what the voting process will be like come this November 5th here in Boston. Take a look.
everyone. That's all the time we have this week here on your Caribbean News and Culture. Hopefully that little video made you more of a conscious voter once you step out to the polls come November 5th. Make sure you get out there and vote. Exercise your right. Vote, 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 vote. Mr. Cooper, thank you so very much for being here. We appreciate your time. And make sure you catch the repeat of our show Saturday and Sunday morning at 10.30. We're always on the web, on Facebook, and give us that thumbs up. I'm Delinda Eiffel, thanks for watching.